Hello and welcome to another episode of Serious Business and today I'm joined by Shadow Communications Minister Jason Clear. Thank you for joining us Jason. It's great to be here. Now I'd like to, I'd like to start with a quote from uh, Bill Clinton. Um, this is from 2009. The internet has become an integral part of America's economic, political and social life. And then about five years later, we have Tony Abbott saying, do we really want to invest $50 billion in what is essentially a video entertainment system? Seems like a bit of a disconnect, doesn't it? Like, um, uh, does our government understand what the internet offers us? Oh, I don't think anyone would be surprised that Tony Abbott doesn't get it, that he doesn't understand how important uh, the NBN is, how important this infrastructure is. You know, from, from my point of view, it's essential infrastructure. It's like, it's like, water out of the tap or electricity at the switch of a button, people need super fast and reliable broadband. And that's what the NBN is all about. That's why I think it's the most important project in Australia at the moment. Well, in 2012, the United Nations uh, declared that the internet is a, uh, access to the internet is a fundamental human right. And that was even backed up by China and Cuba who were traditionally not the best friends of the internet. Um, so that's, that, that matches with your electricity and water thing. Yeah. Now recently we watched a, um, we also saw a show on TV, Struggle Street. Um, and as a nerd, I was, I was quite surprised watching it, at the lack of computers and that. The MBN for something like that, uh, for, for, for that sort of area, wouldn't that help them empower themselves, education, employment, to, to, to get out of that sort of cycle? Yeah, it, it's, it's part of it. I represent an electorate in South West Sydney, which is one of the most disadvantaged in the country. Uh, we've got an, un an unemployment rate, which is almost double uh, the national average. But funny enough, uh, we have more eBay millionaires in my electorate than in anywhere else in the country. Oh, really? So, you know, that gives you a little bit of an indication about the power of technology, how it's changing our economy and how it gives people an opportunity in disadvantaged communities to become sort of micro multinational millionaires. Um, so technology provides enormous opportunities, but there are also real challenges as well, because what you saw on that program and what you see in lots of parts of Australia is the impact of a general decline in the number of unskilled jobs. The, the amount of unskilled jobs in Australia is dropping and that's going to continue to drop and the amount of skilled jobs is going to increase. Most of the jobs that will be created right across Australia over the next decade and beyond require STEM skills, science, technology, engineering and maths. Yeah. And we're not creating enough people, we're not developing enough people with those sorts of skills. That's why Bill Shorten last week announced that we're going to introduce coding as a mandatory part of the curriculum from kindergarten up. Because this is as important as maths or English it's the language of the 21st century. They're doing it in England, they're doing it in the US, they're doing yeah. it in Asia, uh, we're falling behind. If you don't have those sorts of skills, then in Struggle Street, anywhere across the country, uh, then you're going to entrench disadvantage. We need to give our kids those skills and the NBN is just one part of that. A massive opportunity. As a, as a programmer, I think that is one of the best things ever because coding is, is just so much fun. It is so wonderful. Um, the, um, let's look at it from a gaming perspective uh, for, for, for viewers of our show, the, um, the, the speed, the, the current internet. Because like, we have this disconnect where you know, Bill Clinton says it's the most important thing and Tony Everett thinks it's entertainment. Well, let's look at entertainment. Um, recently, I downloaded a game on Steam that was 60 gigabytes. Mm. And it took about a week and every time it rained, it, got, it had to restart, it, it, it was slowed down. Um, really, our current internet, they, they seem to want to reuse the copy network. I mean, really, should we be just letting that go and moving on to something that can do like modern day traffic? Yeah, well, that's why we built the NBN the way uh, we originally designed it, with fiber instead of 20th century copper. If you're a gamer, you know latency is important. It mm. affects the quality of the game and your total experience. Well, it's chalk and cheese between fibre and copper when it comes to latency. Uh, but if you're a business person and you're using the internet to do business, then there's a massive difference between fibre and copper. It can determine whether you can send a file overseas or whether you have to put, you know, have to burn something and put it in the mail. Or you know, one example that I had last year of a company in Bendigo that actually have to put someone on an aeroplane and fly them to Japan to deliver a file because they don't have the NBN, they don't have fibre. So 
I can't under, overestimate how important this technology is and how frustrating it is that this government under Tony Abbott just doesn't get it. Well, if you're a, especially if you we talked about opportunities, um, eBay, millionaires and stuff, mm. but, but also startups. I mean, if, if people learn coding and they, they come up with this great idea that could be, you know, the next Facebook or the next eBay, yeah. I mean, those things happen every couple of years. Um, then you're running it on a slow internet where the customers are getting very slow traffic. I mean, that really does harm those other parts you put together right. to, to really sort of, for Australia, we, we're a very inventive country. We come up with a, a lot of amazing things, but then we get held back by. Yeah. Oh, that's slow. exactly right. Um, the, um, the download- and just to give you an example of yeah. that, I was in Kansas City last year where Google is rolling out fiber uh, across the city and they've created what they call fiber hoods and startups are moving from yeah. different parts of the United States to Kansas City because that's where the fiber is. So like bees to honey, smart entrepreneurs are moving to Kansas City because they can get access to the infrastructure which enables them to create successful businesses. If we don't have the same technology in Australia, then we're putting our own businesses at a disadvantage. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we are basically kneecapping them, aren't we? Yeah, you know, funny thing, I was in New Zealand only yep. a couple of weeks ago. And in New Zealand, they're rolling out a fibre network. Uh, at the end of last decade, they built a fibre to the node network, so fibre to a distribution point and then yep. copper the rest of the way. And they did that for about half the country. And they completed that about 2011. Now they're building a fibre network for about 80% of the country. Now both the New Zealand uh, ultra-fast broadband network and Australia's NBN will, will be completed at the end of this decade. The difference is New Zealand's going to have fibre and for a lot of Australians we're going to be left with this second-rate old copper network. So we're going to have what New Zealand had 10 years ago? Exactly. Well, we're pretty competitive with New Zealand. <laughs> so that's a country... Yeah, well, we beat them in the cricket, but we're not beating them when it comes to, uh, comes to fibre, when it comes to this sort of infrastructure. They can have the World Cup. <laughs> if we can have proper internet. Um, now, I think, I think that'd be quite a surprise for a lot of people, because yeah. we've seen the IOA net, as I think they were, we, we said uh, Romania's got faster internet yeah. in Australia, but I think New Zealand's a bit of a shock. Well, you, know, you normally think of Japan, yeah. South Korea, yes. Singapore, Countries like that, which have got a fibre network, and they're the, 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 the countries that we often compare ourselves to, that we do business with, that we're competing against, yep. and are a very good reason why we need the same infrastructure. But I think a lot of people would be surprised that New Zealand is beating us as well. Well, with the um, uh, South Korea is a big uh, e-gaming um, uh, country, yeah. um, and you know, as that grows and becomes bigger, I mean, here we, we're really also restricting ourselves in some other areas like that as, as well as just did downloads, streaming. Um, I was going to talk about upload speeds um, because there's a lot of, been a lot of discussion about download, but but upload affects our ability to stream as content producers, as as media. Um, it 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 kind of restricts our export of our own culture as well, doesn't it? Yeah, just, well, just I I think that's right. Um, if, you, if you get the second rate NBN, the fibre to the node, then you're only guaranteed five megabits per second on the upload, which you know, compared to what you can get under fibre is very, very low. Um, I gave you the example for businesses um, not being able to send files to, yeah. you know, to, to other companies overseas or other parts of Australia. That's a great example of how the NBN that's being built at the moment by Tony Abbott is a short-sighted, second-rate version of what we really need. And if you're doing business, you want the, you, you, well, you need things to be quick, don't you? Yeah. If someone says, I need this file, I need this. You need it now. Yeah, yeah. jumping on a plane's not a really good option. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you'd think that um, we wouldn't need to do that in this day and age. No, I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> okay, for the, um, you hear the term digital economy a fair bit. Um, uh, what are the ramifications for, for a digital economy of not having good internet? We need uh, a super fast broadband. That's, that's a given, that's a no-brainer. But on top of that, our businesses that uh, we want to thrive in Australia also need skilled workers. That's why the coding work yep. that we're doing is so important. But also access to money, to funds, to fund great ideas. Um, and so we need to boost our venture capital industry and provide access to things like crowdfunding so people can invest small amounts of money in good ideas yeah. and help to grow them. 
I was in uh, Silicon Valley last year and I met an Australian over there called Tan Lee. Now, uh, she's an incredible young woman who's founded a company called Emotive. And they make a device that sits on your head and can be used for gaming. So one example is you can play the game without a joystick, without any other device other than you think it, and it happens on the screen. Incredible technology, which we're going to see rolled out in the years ahead. But not only does it do that, but if you're a quadriplegic, yes. you could put this on your head and move your wheelchair using your brain. And I said to Tan, I said, this is fantastic stuff. Why didn't you set this company up in Australia? And she said, because America is where the money is and where the skilled workers are and all the experience. So if we're gonna take advantage of this opportunity and build the, the digital economy, which is going to make Australia stronger and richer, then what we need to do is not just build a first rate NBN, yep. but we've got to make sure that we've got access to the best skills in the world by building up a skilled workforce in Australia and also access to money in order to fund these great ideas. Yeah, too many Australian ideas do go overseas, don't they? Yeah. Um, but then restricting like this doesn't help. And the investment culture in Australia does seem to be drifting towards property almost exclusively at the moment. Um, Kickstarter campaigns can help, they're very big in gaming. Um, the, um, that, the headset, that's, that's, that's an amazing, life-changing, oh, yeah. life-enabling idea for, for something. That's, a, that's the sort of idea we should have here. Well, I, you can imagine just how much fun it would be, but it's not just uh, a device that can be a lot of fun, it can change people's lives. Imagine yeah. you, know, you don't have the use of your arms or your legs and you, you're, um, you're reliant on other people in so many different ways if you're a quadriplegic. This type of technology will change your life. And if you go onto the Emotive website, you can see quadriplegics using it already. And that's the invention of a smart young Australian. This, this shows you how incredible this country yes. is, right? Came to Australia as a refugee at the age of four. She graduated from high school, I think at the age of 16, became Young Australian of the Year at about 18, became a barrister at 21, set up her first business at 24. Australia gave this young woman all of this opportunity and she's created this fantastic business. But there are some things that this country doesn't have. It doesn't have the skills and the funding to make this business possible. We need to think seriously about what we can do as a country to make sure that we can create businesses like that here in Australia. It goes to show that amazing people that can change the world can come from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any any situation. So, and so that, that's the power of technology. You know, we yeah. were talking about the digital economy. Most of the the companies that are going to be enormous in the future, yeah, haven't even started yet. You know, Facebook's a bit over ten years old. There are so many examples like that that technology is going to provide the opportunity to be born and to bloom in the next few years. Uber, B&B, all of these big disruptive technologies. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see more and more of that. And the, the challenge for Australia is to make sure that these are Australian businesses that are created, not businesses that are lost overseas. Yeah, we seem to be giving up on the chance to do that, don't we? Yeah, we can't afford to. No. Um, can I ask you a question about community TV? Mm. Now, um, we're, we're community TV show. Um, at the end of the year, uh, there's plans to to uh, to take our spectrum, uh, move us onto YouTube, which yep. which we do find amusing since they said you can all go onto YouTube, and then they went and wrecked the internet on us. <laughs> That's one area we can have. We'd like better internet for that, please. You think there's uh, a conspiracy <laughs> happening there? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe they just didn't think it out. <laughs> so um, uh, now, what's um, what's well, you're the shadow communications minister. What's, can that be? Could that be undone? What's your plans for it? What's, what, can we, what, what could we expect if, if things change, basically? Yeah. Well, you're right. Malcolm Turnbull has said that um, Channel 31 and all of community TV gets switched off at the end of the year. So it's not going to be a very happy New Year's Eve for community TV. Come the 1st of January, it's all off. Um, I think it is right to say that there is a need over time to switch to over-the-top services. The internet will provide enormous opportunities for community television as well. But I've been listening to the people who work in community TV and what they've said is we need more time. Yep. If you switch everything off um, just after Christmas, it's going to destroy community TV. And people have asked me and Malcolm Turnbull for a couple more years, yep. you know, two or three more years, just to make sure that we've set up and we've got everything in place 
for the transfer from broadcasting to over the top on YouTube. And uh, I think that's right. We need to make sure we get this right, otherwise we're going to lose a very precious resource in Australia. Yeah, well, I know from our point of view, I mean, migrating all of our viewers onto YouTube um, hasn't been straightforward. No. It, it hasn't been, everybody didn't all of a sudden go, oh, you're going to be on YouTube, we'll jump over there. Yeah. So, so yes, extra time would be really appreciated. Yeah. No, well, look, it's common sense, isn't it? That it will take a bit of time and yeah. we need to take steps to make it happen. Uh, but if we try and force everybody off in December, on yep. the 31st of December, then we really risk making a big mistake and losing something very important. Yeah, a, a product that's just the commercial TV stations generally don't offer. Exactly right. I know from our point of view as a video game show, we would be totally different on commercial TV, probably lose a lot of what makes us actually very good at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Which is the reason people people watch yeah. and, and, and people want to watch. but. It's not that simple just to say on the 31st of December we switch from broadcasting to over the top. There's a lot of steps that need to be taken by lots of different programs and lots of different channels. Yep. And I think the government needs to listen to the things that you're saying and to the things that Community TV is saying to the government. Give us a bit of time, help us to make the transition. Otherwise, um, there's going to be a lot of angry people. So it does fill a role. It definitely does, of just what commercial TV would never take a risk on. Oh, yeah. oh and, and, and don't get me wrong, going to Over the Top provides you with an opportunity to talk to an even bigger audience. Yes. But it's not as simple as flicking a switch. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and all of the, all of the people who work in community TV have told me that you need a little bit more time. And so all I'm saying is the government needs to listen to you. If they don't, worst comes to worst, they turn it off. Um, can it be turned back on, or is it lost for good? I, I, I think it's it, it's um, it's irretrievable. You're going to lose great programs. People are just going to walk away from community TV if they're not set up and they're not in the position to to go over the top. Um, that's why I say the government's got to get this right now. Can't yep. rely on a government to come back and try and patch something up after it's been destroyed. You need to work with the government and people need to write letters to the government and say to the government, listen to what community TV is saying here, yep. give us a little bit more time. And if you want excellent content like ours, a bit longer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you really, really do. Um, cool. Um, all right. Well, look, um, lastly, now I understand you're a big retro gamer. <laughs> so what's your favourite, what's your favourite console? And favourite old game? Well, if, uh, if you wander around my office, you will find my old Commodore 64. It's, uh, um, uh, you have to take me way back now. I'm um, thinking about River Raid was my favourite game when I was playing uh, as a kid. Good choice. <laughs> uh, Decathlon, a few other games there, but River Raid, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old River Raid man. It's uh, nice. lots of fun. Yeah, Commodore 64, a very good choice. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. No, I yes. put a, a photograph of my old Commodore 64 on my Facebook page a little while ago, and yeah. uh, um, a lot of old mates that I used to play games with uh, quickly sent a message there, that a few flashbacks from a lot of fun when I grew up. Awesome. Yeah, video gamers are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Well, look, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for being on the program. Um, yeah, great having a chat to you, and um, hopefully we can catch up again in the future. Love to. That's great. Um, thank you very much, Jason Clare. Cheers. Thank you.